Hello. Good evening. Good to have you all here. Check. Good to hear you see you all today. Talking to this, it's a singing level. It doesn't work for talking level. So it's going to be continuing our series on Christian concepts as we are talking through Ephesians. You're still going to be hearing us from Ephesians 2. If you've been here before, you'll remember it all. If not, well, don't worry. It's okay. We're going to read through it and talk about resurrection tonight. So thank you for coming. Thank you for that's everyone that's watching online. Let's uh, come together with our first song. Would you please stand with us? Our speakers aren't on. That's why I don't sound like I heard myself. I'm pretty loud, but it's really hard to hear sound that's supposed to be coming through. I can hear music in my ear. But you can't. <laughs> Do I hear music? Yeah. Test. Oh, yeah. See? Now this mic works. I wasn't crazy. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, I probably do need a second opinion, but that's besides the point. I do repeat things that... Don't change, it's okay. Now would you please stand with us and sing our next first song. clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down, and every chain will break, broken hearts declare his praise, who can stand the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before you. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, his blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. A God who calls the saved is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before you. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb.
Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before you. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Both the first one and the second one should be getting to be familiar with you. We've sung the second one twice now, so hopefully it sounds a bit more familiar to you. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. Oh, glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. The hand that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nail for me. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day one day the grave could conceal him no longer one day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord, evermore. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him from rising again. Living he loved me. Dying, he saved 
with me Buried he carried my sins far away Rising he justified freely forever One day he's coming, oh glorious day Oh glorious day trumpet will sound for his coming one day the skies turn his glories will shine wonderful day my beloved one's bringing my savior jesus is mine living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day glorious day oh glorious day Maybe seated. We watch a brief video. I want more too, Evie, but it's okay. That's right. We're going to sing our last song, Evie, which you knew beforehand. You can stay seated, but please join me in reflecting on the powerful words of this song. Ah. 
I was a wretch, I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. Sin separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, freed my soul, for the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you. Us, you have saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious light. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious light. There is not stronger than the wonder-working power of the blood, the blood that calls us sons and daughters. We are ransomed by our Father through the blood, the stronger than the render working power of the blood, the blood that calls us sons and daughters. We are ransomed by our Father through the into glorious light. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of Glory to His name. Would you pray with me? 
Thank you, Lord, for this evening, for those that are gathered here in person, and for the many that are watching online. We thank you for the ability to sing praises to your name, for the glory that you've done for us. As we reflect this night on what it means for Easter to be true and resurrection and what its meaning is in our lives. As these things in your holy name. Amen. We're going to be going over the same scripture we've been going over. You think, how many times can you read it? A lot. <laughs> so, Ephesians 2, 4 through 10 is our verses for us this evening. Let us read through them once more. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were, I have a reflection, dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressing his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So, it's the Tuesday after Easter. What's it all about? My question for you tonight is, what does resurrection mean for you? What's the point of it? What's it do? When you think of the word resurrection, what do you think of? Beginnings. Beginnings. Okay. What else? I say the word resurrection. This is a big Christian word. What's it mean to you? What's the point? I mean, I can spout it off in a sermon. We can talk about it. What's it mean? What's resurrection mean? Become alive. Become alive. All right. To be lifted up. To be lifted up. Okay. These are getting good. What else? What images come to your mind when you think of resurrection? Joy. Joy. Okay. Jesus coming out of a tomb. Okay. Jesus coming out of a tomb. That's a pretty straightforward one. So we have a hole in the ground of death. And we have him coming out of it. What's that mean for you, though? Celebration in the back. I'll take that one. What do you think? Saved from our sins. Okay. So, eventually, unless Jesus comes back in your lifetime, we're all going to die. And last time we talked about how sin brings us to a state of death. We talked in many ways about grace first. Then we talked about what's the point of being alive. Then we talked about sin. Then we talked about sin again. Now we're talking about resurrection. So one day you're going to die, and then you're going to be resurrected. What's that mean? What's it mean for you? Okay. What do you think you're going to look like? I haven't thought about it. Well, why not? That's the whole, I mean, it's a big point. If you haven't thought about it at all, you're kind of missing out on a big deal here. Okay, what do you promise? What's it look like? What's that life look like? Okay, we're getting somewhere better now. All right. We're okay, see, now, this, now we're getting a bit closer to better things, not just new life or things. Free from pain. That's a good one. Resurrection in Christ is free from pain. What else? Free from money wars. What's that? Free from money wars. Free from money wars, yeah. I, I mean, it's true, you don't have to worry about money anymore. I mean, that's what a lot of people's lives are built around, is the race to try to get money, so get rid of that. Seeing your relatives that have Seeing relatives and loved ones that have passed. What else? Yes. Make new friends. No one says you can't make new friends in resurrection. That's kind of the point, right? Walk streets, of gold. Walk streets of gold. Now we're getting into some interesting imagery. Now we're pulling from Revelation, which actually will tie in on Sunday mornings, because that's where we're headed, actually, in the following week. That Easter is something that points toward the future, and that Revelation has much to do with that truth. Walking streets of gold. What's that mean? I mean, we could actually picture walking streets of gold, but what do you think that means for you? What's the image trying to declare for you? A great life. A great life. Okay. 
flowers. Everything's beauty. You think there'll be music? Absolutely. All right. How much music? Lots. Lots of music. What kind of music? Any kind. Any kind. So it's not just going to be no, chanting. No. No. <laughs> not just country and western. It's, it's true. Probably a bit of everything. Yeah. The Bible just says there will be singing. It doesn't say exactly how or what. Some people will probably prefer one way over the other. And you know what? You'll probably be able to find all the ways. Who knows? Maybe there's even a better perfect way of singing. And all the ways we try to get it right now, we'll just miss the mark. And we'll think, oh, that's how we're supposed to be singing the whole time. Maybe we'll be able to sing. <laughs> We'd hope. I mean, it's a resurrected body. So one would hope that we can all sing. Right? And, uh, I mean, everyone can sing. It's not going to be It's not going to, well, I don't know about that. There's plenty of good spoken word hymns out there. You just, maybe not for you, Carol Jean, but for someone out there, it's going to be the most beautiful version of rap ever. Resurrected rap. It can happen. All right, so we're getting closer. Beautiful life, no pain, no sorrow, seeing loved ones singing in all its best forms. How does that mean for you now? Does resurrection have any meaning for you now? Okay, so it's something to look forward to. But, yes, you had your hand up. Play with friends? Yeah. You really want to play with friends tonight, apparently. All right. In Ephesians here, Paul throughout it is speaking of being raised in new life, you're saved from the dead. But he says it not just in a future tense, but also in a way that impacts now. We're lifted into new life in Christ now. Now we haven't fully died, we don't have a resurrection body, but some of the things promised to us, we can have tastes of, elements of in our life now. Doesn't mean that you're gonna be free of pain tomorrow, doesn't mean you get friends tomorrow, but those truths are meant to permeate into now. That we're supposed to not just hope for them, but grasp for them. Easter isn't just about hoping for the day that I get to die and leave. I mean, many Christians, unfortunately, live their lives as though that's what it's about. I just go to church, hear some things, and wait for the day I die. That way, eventually, I'll get to go to heaven. But that doesn't really do much. It doesn't change the world doesn't change your life. If that's all resurrection's about, I think we're also missing a bit of what the video pointed out. That we all have scars, we all have wounds, and we're broken from God. It's resurrection, what we think about it, is always about a physical body. Walking on streets, eating tasty food, playing with friends, singing songs, but there's a spiritual aspect as well. There's a spiritual truth to resurrection that you get to participate in now. That the old life in you, the one that brought you those scars, the ones that made you make the wrong choices, the ones that made it harder for you to love others, those times you were bent on being angry, you can put that behind you. That resurrection for us now is that every day is a new chance to live in the resurrected truth of Christ. That you can make new choices. It's about new. It's about coming up out of the tomb to a garden, to a new life. One of you said new life. So how does it change your life now? What do you think? How can picturing it as not just a get out of jail, a hell at the end card, but one that affects you now, how does that change the picture, if at all, for you? Or make you question? It would erase a lot of negativity. That's a big one. A lot of people carry baggage. A lot of people carry negativity about themselves and about others. Oh, I don't like how I did that. Oh, I've made too many mistakes. I just beat myself up over about it or hold those grudges against others. Christ died to put those away. All that brokenness that the video showed, the sin of the world, the wounds, the scars, they're healed. We're meant to move beyond those into joy. Actually have happiness now, not just wait for the time that it happens to be the day I die and get to go to heaven. What else? It's a good one. Any other thoughts on how does, how does resurrection change your life now? 
What do you think? Or has it? Does it? Have you let it? What do you think? I see the cogs turning. The wheels thinking. What was that? Wood's burning. Wood's burning. Uh -huh, the smoke's coming out. But that's the question we have to ask ourselves about a lot of Christian truths. When we talked about grace, we talked about sin, we talked about death. It was these concepts. It's these things that we study and learn about, but then don't think about applying into our life. And resurrection, the maybe considerably one of the most important parts of our faith that distinguishes us from really any others, is just this far-off concept or some ancient concept. But it doesn't really mean anything to me now, when it should. That's what Paul was saying. We're made alive in new bodies. We can do new things. We're made to do good deeds, and we can do them because we're alive in Christ. Our old ways are dead. Now you get to try again. It's all wrapped up in that grace. It's all wrapped up in that new being. But we sometimes just get lost in the weeds, in the pictures of future, and we don't actually grasp hold of it. I want to help you grasp hold of it. To take these random concepts and put wheels on it and be able to ride it like a bike. Take it out for a spin. See how it runs. So let this Easter season, this week in particular, I mean, I'm tired. This is the fourth. Fourth. <laughs> oh no, one, two, yeah, fourth service in a week. But it's good. This is what it's about. It gives you life and energy when you just think about it instead of all the bad things. You can focus your mind either on all the bad news, on all the issues, and let them weigh you down, or you can focus your mind on the truths that Christ has promised and then be able to face those issues without them weighing you down. So I encourage you to take resurrection for a spin this week, or two weeks until we come back again. Try it out. See how it feels. See how it changes you. And if you have thoughts on it, questions on it, comments on it, I'd love to hear them. Would you pray with me tonight? God, help us to grasp hold of resurrection, that it's a truth that changes our lives now, that we're not called to wander alone or figure maybe in the future things will change, when you changed things forever 2,000 years ago, that an empty tomb means my life doesn't have to be empty now that I can have joy, that I can have hope, that I can have love. So I pray that you'll change our lives, that this coming week will be a time of joy in the hardships, a time to grasp hold of new life, no matter how old or young we are, and be able to live as you guide us. All these things in your name. Amen. All right, well, thank you for coming again this evening. Yeah, sure. Eternal heart
ĐẾN NAY